In the name of Allah, the most gracious and most merciful, may the peace and blessings of Allah the Exalted be upon the Prophet Muhammad and his purified progeny, and may the damnation of Allah be upon their enemies. Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We continue our discussion in the third episode, and we will just have a brief recap before watching the next clip. In the last episode, we spoke about the word Rab, and how when the word Rab on, is used on its own, the first meaning that would come to someone's mind is Allah Azza wa Jal. And they would think of the Divine Lord, the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Therefore, it's not correct and it is wrong for anyone to say, for example, Hussein Rab or Ali Rab. Rather, we see that when the word Rab is used with another word, connected to another noun, let's say, in a specific context, that it can also have various meanings which is not for divine lordship. For example, we showed the verse in the Holy Quran where Prophet Yusuf, peace be upon him, used this word um, in the sense of someone's master. So he used this word to say about the person who will pour the wine for his master. And the word Rab was used in the Holy Quran. And of course, the tafasir of the mukhalifin of those who refer to themselves as Ahl Sunnah also testify that the word Rab can mean Sayyid or can mean, for example, master or someone who has authority over particular people. Therefore, of course, the clip where it showed the speaker saying that Hussein becomes a Rab is wrong and is not permissible for one to say and can in fact be shirk. So one should avoid saying, for example, um, a Rab on its own in any other context except when they are speaking about Allah Azza wa Jal. But then we also showed in Basair al-Darajat in a hadith from Imam Baqir alayhi salam where he showed that the word Rab was used in the sense of Imam Ali alayhi salam being the Rab, the master of authority because obviously he is an Imam, he is a Hujjah and the Rab of obedience and then in the same narration and it says War Rab with the Alif and the Lam and the Rab is the Khaliq and the creator of the um, heavens and the earth who cannot be described. So it was made clear in that narration that the Rab can be used for other than Allah in the non-lordship sense. And then the Rab obviously by itself is only for Allah Azza wa Jal. And of course, Sayyid Hussein Ghazwini, they showed him sending condolences on this scholar. But we assume the best that he didn't obviously know these types of beliefs and had he seen these types of beliefs being promoted, he would have not spoken about him or sent condolences until getting clarification. So what we want to do is view the second clip, which was shown of one Iranian Mu'ammam reciting some poetry about Imam Ali alayhi salam. And then we want to discuss the content of this poetry and see whether it conforms to the teachings of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Because now we've clarified that one shouldn't say Hussein Rab, Ali Rab. But let us see other ways which people describe the Imams and whether this is also permissible or not. So we will pay, play the clip. روزی که خلق کرد علی را به صورت ناس خدای را همه دیدن در میان لباس So welcome back dear brothers and sisters we've just seen the clip of this poetry being recited and we will assume that the clip hasn't been cut out of context and that it is correctly subtitled and put in context of not the person actually uh, quoting this poetry and then responding to it. I haven't seen the full clip myself, but let's assume that the clip is correct. Now such poetry is firstly contradictory to say that, for example, um, Imam Ali alayhi salam, he's a creation and then after that Allah Azza wa Jal comes into his body or is Imam Ali alayhi salam, because there's a clear distinction between the creator and the created. But let's um, just analyze quickly some of the, the quotes or um, things that was being said in this poetry. Now, of course, to say that Imam Ali alayhi salam is Allah seen in the flesh 
is ghulu, it's extremism, exaggeration, and kufr, it's disbelief. Anyone who believes in this would not be from the Shia, they would be from the ghulat, and they are committing a form of shirk when they try to say that Imam Ali alayhi salam is Allah and that he is a physical form of Allah. Because such a belief is not different from some other religions where they believe that Allah Azza wa Jal physically manifests himself in a body of a human being or comes into a creation. So what does this concept go back to? Now this belief, dear brothers and sisters, actually existed throughout history and is called Hulul, the incarnation. We find that previous groups within history and even some of the extreme Sufis now, they believed in this concept where God would physically come into a body of one of his creation. And we also find that there are people who mention about a group called the Hululiya, a group who followed Al-Hallaj, the well-known Sufi personality, the extreme Sufi personality, who believed in this type of incarnation that Allah Azza wa Jal comes into someone. And of course, again, this is similar to the Christian belief where they believe that God was in the physical body of Prophet Isa alayhi salam. So this is something that the Ghulat also say and these types of statements and this poetry seen by this Mu'ammam is condemned and if he actually does believe these types of beliefs or is promoting it, he would be considered from the Ghulat. Even if he is wearing some common clerical clothing as seen, he would be someone who is a Ghali and condemned by the true Shia ulama and what the statements that he is saying would be against the beliefs of the Shia. And of course, someone who says this, the Shia ulama would say such a person is deviant and najis. They are um, spiritually and physically impure. Now we find that hulul is when someone comes into, um, when someone believes that Allah Azza wa Jal comes into the body of a human or manifests himself in something physical. And we also have another belief, um, or there is another belief called al-ittihad. And this belief is when someone believes that one becomes one with God. Allah and this person become one. But as we know, if these two things are separate, they can never be one together in this sense. And this is a batil, invalid type of belief. So al-ittihad is when two things become united. And it could be possible that some of the Nusayris or the Alawis believe this type of belief where they have the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Imam Ali alayhi salam and Salman, where they believe that they all become one or united. However, their beliefs are hard to examine since many of their beliefs were hidden or not spoken about um, openly. So we find this type of hulul in some of the Christian beliefs as well. And we can also refute this belief of hulul rationally because we find that firstly it necessitates jismiya. The Shia belief is that Allah Azza wa Jal is not in a jism. He is not in a physical body and this is widely narrated in our ahadith that it is impossible that Allah Azza wa Jal comes into a body. This is not something, a, a correct question which can be asked to say that Allah Azza wa Jal comes and physically manifests himself in any of the Imams. Because if one would have such a belief then it would necessitate deficiency of Allah Azza wa Jal and it would necessitate that the Creator is needy and in need. So this is how we can refute this concept rationally. Because if Allah Azza wa Jal would need to come into a body, he needs a body, that shows that he's in need of this physical type of body to manifest into. And he would be in need of something which is the creation. Therefore, we cannot believe in such a concept of hulul, which was said in this poetry in the clip. Now some might say, oh, this is just poetry, but any type of poetry should not, again, exceed the boundaries and should not go against the fundamental beliefs of the Islamic doctrine. So such poetry, even if it's poetry and it's not based on any sources, it would not be allowed for anyone to recite poetry like this as they are exceeding the limits. And they are trying to say that Allah Azza wa Jal is in a form. Some of the Salafis may believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is in a form. They believe that Allah will be actually seen and reveal himself and be confined into an image and an image is a type of jism. 
But the Shia school does not believe this. And again, if Allah Azza wa Jal needed or incarnated into a type of body, it would necessitate that he is needy. Allah Azza wa Jal needs this body to go into and therefore he is not all powerful. But we say that this is impossible um, and this is not correct to say about Allah Azza wa Jal. As we know as well, bodies are made up of parts. Even our bodies, we find that they are made up of millions of different cells of, and we have parts which all function together. So a body is something which functions from different parts and therefore we say that this is not correct to say for Allah Azza wa Jal as he himself does not need any parts. Allah does not need any limbs to carry out activities and to function. And such poetry, what we will do is show again how it contradicts the Shia narrations that we have. For example, if we go in Kitab al-Tawheed, um, chapter 6, narration 7, we will look into this belief which was presented back at that time to the Imam. So this Mu'ammam who is saying this type of poetry in the clip, he's merely just repeating the kufr type of beliefs and exaggeration which did occur in the past and which was presented to the Imams and the Imams of course refuted this. So if we go to the narration, Yunus bin Zabian, he says to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. He speaks to him and he says that he heard Hisham. So Hisham bin Hakam saying these types of beliefs. Now someone say that, oh, Hisham bin Hakam is a great companion of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. He was known for debating on many theological matters. So how is it that he can have these types of beliefs? We say that these were his beliefs in the beginning stages. And later on, Hisham bin Hakam, he didn't believe this type of tajseem. However, in the beginning, when he was more simple-minded and learning still, he firstly had incorrect beliefs about Allah Azza wa Jal, and later on he was trained under, Im under the Imam and developed his beliefs. But the person says that he entered on, um, so he came to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, and he told him about the long statement that Hisham bin Hakam made, which was what? The following. يَزْعُمُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ جِسْمٌ لِأَنَّ الْأَشْيَاءَ شَيْئًا جِسْمٌ وَفَعْلُ الْجِسْمٌ So he says that Hisham, he, um, he summarizes it and he says, he considers Allah to be a body because things are of two types, bodies or actions of bodies. Hence, if it is not possible for the Creator to be an action, it is only possible that He is a doer. So then Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he uh, replied to this and he replied in a harsh way where he scolds the beliefs of Hisham bin Hakam on these particular um, matters relating to Tajseem. And he says the following Wayla Ama Anima and Al Jisma Mahdud Mutanahin was Sura Mahdudatun Mutanahiatun. So the Imam says, Woe to him. Does he not know that a body is extremely limited? and that an image is limited. Hence, if a limit is possible, then increase and decrease are possible. So as we know, our bodies are limited. They're limited in size, they're limited in their capabilities. And of course, as the Imam said, they have decrease and increase. For example, you yourself, when you are a younger person or you are a baby, you are limited in your size and you are also um, you would increase in your size. So as you grow, as you get nutrients and you eat food, what? Your body, it increases. And then when you get older, you may find particular decreases on your body as well, decreases within your health, maybe in your um, physical looks. For example, you may have had hair before. You see, for example, that you are losing your hair and you see certain decreases within your body and bodily functions. So the Imam alayhi salam, Imam Sadiq, he says to this companion who quoted the um, quote of Hisham bin Hakam, that body, woe to him, does he not know that body is limited? So we're limited and an image is limited as well. Hence, if a limit is possible, then increase and decrease are possible. And increase and decrease is what we see when we imagine images as well. An image, even one that imagines an image, because the imagination is one of the most powerful tools or the po most powerful tool of a human, it is still limited within their mind and this cannot be applied to Allah Azza wa Jal. Woe to him, does he not know that a body is extremely limited and an image is extremely limited? 
Hence, if a limit is possible, then increase and decrease are possible. And if increase and decrease are possible, then he is created. So if these limited properties apply to Allah Azza wa Jal, then it means that Allah is created and that he is no longer God. So the person asked Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, then what should I say? So Imam Sadiq alayhi salam replied the following, he has neither a body nor an image, for he is the creator of bodies and images. He is devoid of parts and limits. So Allah Azza wa Jal, he does not have limbs. It's not like the Salafis say about him having hands and uh, feet and these types of limbs. If this is mentioned in the Quran or narrations or when this is mentioned, we take this metaphorically. He is devoid of parts and limbs because as we know, Allah Azza wa Jal, he doesn't need parts and limbs. This is what the limited creation needs in order to function and carry out particular tasks. He does not increase nor does he decrease. If he were as he, Hisham says, then there would be no difference between the creator and the created or between the inventor and the invented. However, Allah Azza wa Jal, he is the inventor. The creator of bodies and images does not resemble anything, nor does anything resemble him. So this is the type of Tawheed of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, where he clearly showed that Allah Azza wa Jal does not have parts. He is not um, he does not have increase and de decrease and he cannot be put in a body because all of these things are attributes of the creation which the creation need. Therefore this type of poem which was being said is not in line with the beliefs of Ahlul Bayt alayhim We don't care who says it, how much of a popular speaker they may be, although I don't know the name of this particular speaker, I, I recognize him by face, but we do not care who they are. If anyone goes on the pulpits and preaches beliefs which contradict the beliefs of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam, then such a person should be condemned, they should not be pre promoted, and also one should avoid sharing their material or even attending such gatherings. So inshallah ta'ala in the next episode we will go through the final clip which uh, was presented and we will go into some discussions and then inshallah ta'ala further on in later episodes we pro will present more clips about what the Shia scholars position is on those who make exaggerated and kufr type statements. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum wa ala